Black Temple is the most fun and kind of exciting raid we've had in the entire expansion so far in the Burning Crusade Classic. This is the first raid where we're going to see some really crazy speed runs, but it's also the first raid where each boss encounter has unique abilities that you can kind of utilize or exploit and different kind of strategies you can go in and employ to increase your actual DPS. My name is Sarth and welcome to the ultimate Black Temple parsing guide for hunters. There's a few things to talk about for each of the encounters in this raid. That ranges from what consumables you're using, if it's a demon or if it's not, what trinkets you're using because we now have access to the Ash Tongue trinket and you might also have Madness of the Betrayer as well as Bloodlust Brooch, what playstyle you're utilizing for each of these encounters because I'm sure you've all noticed melee weaving is insanely powerful even if you're not hacking with the auto hotkey script and of course how to manage your pets because some of these encounters actually require you to do some different things with pet management to increase your DPS and as well keep your pet alive. Really quickly, I do want to mention an insanely powerful and useful weak aura from our boy Dars actually, and this will be linked in the description, but it is a clickable consumable weak aura that will track how long you have of every one of your consumes on yourself and your pet as well as just allow you to click all of them. So you can see I have 12 strength scrolls. If I were to click on this, strength scroll directly on my pet. This thing is amazing. I wanted to suggest it to you guys as we're moving on into Sunwell, Black Temple and beyond. And before we get into it, I do wanna mention that coming next week or the week after, I will be putting out a melee weaving guide as well as a guide on how to push on those overall damage meters. I'm currently rank two in the world and next week I plan to get rank one and I will be breaking down that run if it all goes well. Anyways guys, from there, let's jump right into the first boss. Hi, Warlord Nagentis. Now this is an extremely melee weave friendly fight, so make sure to utilize this playstyle if you have a two-handed weapon. Also, you're going to be using Major Agility as well as Major Mage Blood on this fight. It is not a demon, so you don't need to worry about that. As for trinkets, I would personally suggest using the Ash Tongue Trinket or Madness if you have it, because this is not a fight where you need to worry about moving too much, and it's also not a fight where you need to worry about different phases or timing your cooldowns perfectly with your trinket. So before the fight actually starts, just get into position. Now, if you do get a second level, you want to use that right after you pop the bubble. So the first less will almost always be sent very early on the fight, especially this fight in particular, because you don't want it to persist as the boss gets bubbled. And the biggest thing for parsing on this fight is actually breaking the bubble fast. If your raid takes too long to break the bubble, you might actually get a second one, which is all downtime and it's going to crush your parse itself. One little cheeky thing you could do for this fight is try to time something like an aim shot ability or a steady shot just to hit the boss directly as the bubble is actually broken. It will do a little bit extra damage because you just have that downtime anyways. From there, you're going to hope that you have good RNG and don't get targeted by his little stun and just sit back and machine gun pump this boss or get in there and melee weave pump the boss. Moving on to Supremus. This is the first demon in the raid, so make sure you swap on to Elixir of Demon Slaying. Bloodlust Brooch is really nice here because you can control when you use it to be timed out with your cooldowns, and you actually might have a fight that allows you to get cooldowns used twice. So if you time that perfectly, it will be pretty huge. The biggest thing for DPSing on this fight is moving as little as possible and keeping your pet alive. So during the actual kite phase, try to position yourself in a place where the boss isn't being kited directly over you unless he's actually targeting you yourself. Also, be very wary that when he does the reset or aggro drop on this phase, a lot of times it actually doesn't drop threat of your pet. So your pet is just consistently building threat throughout this phase where eventually, no matter what, it will pass that 10k threshold that he chooses when he targets someone for the fixate and it'll just turn around and one shot your pet. Just make sure to keep an eye on the threat meters during this phase and taunt your pet and reset its threat whenever it is getting kind of high. Another thing to watch out for for your pets and yourselves is if a volcano is put on you or if the boss is kind of kited through a volcano, your pet can die extremely fast. So this is one of those fights where you're 
always ready to tonk your pet, as well as watching where its positioning is not only on the threat meter, but in actual spatial awareness. I personally don't like to melee weave on this fight because his hitbox is kind of weird, and there's a lot of downtime when you're running away from the boss or being a little bit more ranged from him during the kite phase, so I'm not sure if it's exactly worth it, Personally, I opt not to. And the last thing to know is that you're gonna want to actually save your misdirect for right after the kite phase. Make sure you use it on your tank so that you can just instantly start pumping the boss again instead of actually hitting it with something like a multi-shot right away and ripping aggro. The next fight is obviously Shade of a Comma, and we're actually gonna skip over this boss for the most part. Ideally, in a situation here, you are probably helping your raid more by DPSing the ads before the boss as they are just being used to pop seeds for your Warlocks. But if you wanted to parse, you want to be pumping as hard as you possibly can on the actual ads, the channelers, maybe also using sappers to hit multiple targets as well as explosive traps, and then burning the boss as much as you can. This is a fight, of course, where you're back using agility and mage blood, but it's a simple one. Don't worry about parsing on it too much and just make sure you're helping your raid. Terran Gorfine. This is the perfect fight for melee weaving. It is also the fight where we started noticing some people doing inhumane abilities of melee weaving, basically. And if you want to know more about that, of course, I already made a video on it up there in one of the corners. Get close to the boss or close to where he's going to be tanked and make sure you are pumping and doing your rotation as best you can. You're still using agility and major mage blood actually all the way until we get to mother. So don't worry about changing any of that. Use your CDs early with lust if you can. You might get CDs back a second time depending on your actual raids kill times. So if you are going to get that, make sure you're using your CDs as early as possible. Now there are random abilities that get sent out to you that'll hit you with damage, even ones that aren't the one that turns you into a ghost, and this will cause actual knockback on your steady shots, and it can cause you to clip quite heavily. One of the cheekiest and best things you can actually do is getting a shaman to put earth shield on you. With this, you have a 30% chance to resist any knockbacks whenever you take damage. This can be huge and it can be added up on this fight and another fight I'm sure you'll know. It will be the next one we talk about. So make sure your shamans are popping one earth shield on you before this fight and trying to keep it up because you want to reduce knockback and as well try to melee weave. It does actually help because you're spending less time casting which is steady shot and multi shot and more time kind of moving and doing instant cast abilities. Reliquary of Souls. This is one of the most fun fights and unique fights in this entire raid, and the VOD you're watching in the background is actually the rank one in the entire world. This fight actually almost encourages you to melee weave because, like I was mentioning with the last fight, the knockback. Now, this is important to know, guys. The first phase of this fight has zero armor. That's right, literally zero armor. So that means you don't need to worry about having armor pen and you also don't need to worry about armor debuffs on the boss. One cheeky thing you can do, and it's something that I haven't started doing yet because of gear restrictions, is actually utilize gear that is stronger against things with zero armor. And then actually during the transitions, you can actually queue up your gear swap and feign death and fully change your gear set. So you can go in with a different gear set for the first phase than the second two, which have 6,200 armor. Another thing I would suggest is using Bloodless Brooch on this fight because you have three usages of your CDs, one for each phase, and you want to time out your trinket with all of your cooldowns perfectly to do the most damage. In an ideal world, you would have perfect uptime of like the Ash Tongue trinket during phase one, but I would never use Madness on phase one. Then during phase two with the knockback, you're going to use the same cheeky idea that we had for Terran Gorfine. You're going to have a Shaman put Earth Shield on you. You can get priests to bubble you, but you basically break that bubble instantly, so it barely reduces the knockback. It could help you, but it's not too much. One thing I found and suggested early on and think is really, really helpful is get as close to this boss as humanly possible, even if you're not melee weaving during this phase, and you'll actually find that you have slightly less knockback because the timing of your actual projectiles hitting the boss is fast enough that both abilities will hit at basically the same time, and you don't get a large double pushback on your casts. If you are melee weaving, this is the best time to really pump up the meters 
because when you're melee weaving, again, you're not getting pushback on your casts. Not nearly as much as if you're just sitting back and doing 5-5-1-1 or whatever your rotation is at the time. In an ideal world where you're parsing, you might actually have a warrior tank that will spell reflect the dead end onto the boss and make him take more damage, but I know most of us actually don't have warrior tanks in our raids, so don't really worry about that if you don't have that opportunity. And the last thing I really want to mention here is you can actually utilize immolation traps or snake traps on this boss as soon as he comes out of the phase. So you will always have time to place a trap where the boss is actually gonna come out and it'll just add a cheeky little bit of extra damage for you. Also, make sure you're MDing here, especially during the last phase because threat is very important. Of course, threat is non-existent on phase one, but in the last phase, you really don't wanna over aggro. And since we're halfway through the raid, I wanna take a moment to thank today's sponsor for this video twitch.tv slash sarth. If you have any questions, want to learn how to improve, have someone do some log analysis for you, or if you want to watch me freak out after I accidentally spill water on my keyboard and it spazzes out and still get some top 20 parses worldwide. And of course, I should mention our merch store is finally available. The link's in the description. It shows support to the channel and as well helps me be able to continue making this content. All right, enough shameless plugging. Let's get back into the raid. Gertog Blood Boil. This is a melee weave friendly fight if you don't have to soak. And in an ideal world, your soak group is actually decently close to the boss. So whatever movement you really have to do is very minimal. Now Warcraft Logs has reworked how this fight is tracked. So if you do actually get the buff from him where you do a ton more damage, it is normalized and it actually will hurt your parse because you're doing melee damage as you're hitting the boss or you might get bopped and that's just pure downtime. This fight is decently long and I would actually suggest using Bloodlust very early and using your CD very early you might get a second usage of your two minute cds so if you can definitely utilize those to the best of your abilities from there you're just going to want to pump the boss and hope you have to move as little as possible mother shiraz this is the next fight where you start using demon slaying instead of agility elixir and that is a huge dps boost for you guys always use it whenever you can the best advice i have for you on doing decent on this fight is always going to be just to make sure you stay alive but the best advice i have to be cheeky and parse is going to be use as little actual shadow res as you can and hope for good rng now this is something i definitely cannot do because i am in a speed running guild and we have to make sure we live instead of just kind of gambling and hoping that we don't get teleported. So the best pieces to use are always gonna be the neck, the cloak, as well as goblin rocket boots. That should be enough to keep you alive through almost all situations, as well as, of course, health stones. This is not a fight where I would suggest melee weaving. You're basically gonna be sitting in one position and pumping the boss as much as you can. It's gonna be extremely hard to get a crazy good parse on this fight if you are tanking him in any of the back positions, kind of near the waterfall or on the side all the way in the back of the room. This is because the fight actually starts right as you engage the encounter and all of the time of the boss getting there is like 10 seconds of just downtime purely for your actual part. So you're gonna wanna fight the boss very close to where it actually stands. This is the second boss you might have to worry about watching your pet for. Your pet can one, get cleaved and instantly killed, and two, take a ton of damage from the vile beams just randomly and die. Don't wait for a heal if your pet's at half HP because your pet could just instantly get another beam and die right away. I would just always taunt it if it's at half HP and send it back at the boss. From there, you could technically utilize Earth Shield again to reduce some knockback, but it's not really something I would be too worried about. Just make sure your pet stays alive and make sure you stay alive and pump the boss as hard as you can and hope you don't get bad RNG. The Illidari Council. You're gonna use agility and mage blood on this fight and I would personally not melee weave. There's way too much movement and there's too much going on for you to actually get into good positions for it. And try to make sure that your guild is keeping debuffs on the bosses. Cleave damage is huge here, so sometimes you're actually gonna hold off on using multi-shot in case you think you're gonna have a chance to hit three targets very soon. And to do that, that means having the paladin boss as well as the rogue boss tanked on top of each other. And if you're getting enough interrupts on the priest boss, 
you can tank all three of them together. Now the rogue boss has very low armor, so you can pump him extremely hard, especially with cleave or normal attacks, but he also does get targeted by the paladin's bop, as well as will vanish and basically be untargetable. So be aware of that if you choose to DPS him specifically. Hope that the boss is doing more magic resistance than physical resistance, but there's nothing you can do to control this. But the biggest thing you can do to increase your personal DPS on this fight is to position early and stay in one position, almost never having to move. If your tank has a set triangle or square or circle that he tanks them in, just make sure you're always gonna be in range and kind of off on your own as well, so you have less chance to be targeted by any AoE abilities or anyone around you targeted by AoE abilities forcing you to move. And the two last things for this boss is I generally hold arcane shot a little bit longer than I need to, because if I do have to move, I do always want to have that instant cast ability. And as well, I'm always watching out on my pets HP again, because if you are in a melee heavy composition, there's going to be a lot of AOE damage on top of the paladin boss himself. So your pet might take quite a bit of damage. Just make sure it doesn't die. Illidan Storm Range. This is like the most frustrating boss in here for the sole reason of if your pet dies, it's your fault and you were thinking about something else or you weren't paying attention. Of course, we're using Demon Slaying on this boss and phase one is very melee weave friendly. So if you're melee weaving, make sure you're very close to the boss so you can just get that out during the first phase. Pump all CDs early because you're going to want to use them two other times throughout this boss or potentially three if your kill times are a little bit longer. This fight is all about pet management. If you can keep your pet alive, you will do more damage. If your pet dies, it loses one, all buffs, two, probably happiness, which reduces its DPS, and three, you're wasting a ton of mana resurrecting your pet and downtime of actually not DPSing or not having your pet on any of the bosses. There's a little bit of RNG here, as well as tank positioning can be massive for keeping your pets able to actually DPS the boss. All phases have some sort of flame AOE on the ground that pets can get stuck in and be basically killed. So always be ready to taunt your pet or call it back if it's getting a little bit low. During phase two, your biggest concern is always watching where your pet is positioned, its health, and making sure it never dies to something like the flame or especially a blue beam. And there's times where I've experienced this personally, where you think that the melee or the tank is going to eat a blue beam and you're trying to call it out in Discord instead of letting them do their job and watching your own pet. So calling it out might save the tank, but then your pet dies. Well, that's more of the tank's job or the raid leader's job. Don't worry about that yourself. Always watch your pet and don't instantly call your pet back out if it's super low and you think that Illidan is going to be casting his little fireballs on whatever group you're stacked up on because it could come back out and just get instantly killed. Right after phase two, you're going to use Bloodlust as well as all of your cooldowns again to just pump this boss down to 30%. In an ideal world, if you really wanted to parse it, you would actually start the demon transition at 30% and then he actually has like quite long RP while he's doing this transition, which you can just sit there and keep pumping the boss before he does his actual shadow prison transition. The only thing you need to really worry about here is there is that threat drop. So you definitely need to MD your tank and you also definitely need to feign death yourself and probably even taunt your pet if that's the case. From there, the actual RP itself is quite long. So you should most of the time get a third usage out of your cooldowns when he comes back up. But if you're not going to get that, just make sure you finally reuse your three minute cooldown rapid fire. Ideally, when you get like a proc of something like DST or Madness or Ashton, whatever you have. And the last thing you got to do is pray for glaives, pray for the loot, get your gear in your raid and pump. There you have it. That is everything you need to focus on for every single boss encounter. So take all of these strats and utilize them in your own raids. And I can guarantee you, you will increase your parses. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I will be putting out a melee weaving guide very soon. If you want to keep up with that, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you like any of this content or as I've now leveled a warrior and want to potentially see me do parse guides or guides on warriors as I improve in that class, Make sure to let me know in the comments.
Lastly, I do want to thank our sponsor for today, twitch.tv slash Sarth. Without the kind patronage of the Sarth scribers, we would not be able to continue to make content like this. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there. Pump harder. And I will see you all on the next one.